Hello. Welcome back to .NET Phillies. I am Jared, your host with the most, and welcome back to another Wednesday episode. We're back. I know I keep saying we're back, but I'm trying to think of an intro, kind of like a every week kind of thing, but uh, so far it's kind of fallen on deaf ears a little bit. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be looking at the Philly series against the Orioles, the Philly series against uh, a little bit against the Red Sox. I know I recorded kind of in the middle of that, um, as well as the series against the Padres. Um, so we will kind of go over all those series, kind of keynotes to take away from this past week. We have some more John's hot takes match due to the week wrapping it up with a series preview against the Arizona Diamondbacks as well as the Detroit Tigers into early next week. So a lot to get to in this episode, but before we do, I just kind of want to go over some stuff uh, in terms of some programming alerts that it will be headed towards you guys. Um, so next week will be a normal episode on, on Wednesday, um, but the following week, uh, that is the week of 4th of July, there will not be an episode until uh, the second week in July. Uh, July uh, 3rd uh, will be that episode. I'm actually going away. I'll be going down to Florida for a week, so I will not be able to post. I just wanted to give you guys a heads up, and I'll remind you guys next week that that is what is going on. So there will be no episode on July 3rd. Third, there will be one the following week once I get back. I kind of just wanted to give you guys a heads up. Maybe there will be one. Maybe I'll bring my laptop and my camera, and maybe there'll be one, kind of like a little impromptu one. Um, it kind of depends on where we are at at that time because our flight is in the morning, and we were just kind of seeing what's going on. So there might be an episode more likely. No, but I just kind of wanted to give you guys a heads up. So that way you're kind of not blindsided when I uh, don't record anything and don't have anything to show for that week of the 4th of July. So as of recording this, uh, we had some kind of, uh, Hmm. Where to start? Where to start? So kind of looking at the Boston series, the Boston series uh, was, was very infuriating. So was the Orioles series. Um, a road AL East opponent is always difficult. You look at uh, Aaron Nola, very bad in his start against the Red Sox, couldn't really locate his fastball. And if he can't locate a fastball, kind of hard to piggyback everything else off of that. Um, you also had Struggles with Chris Sanchez, just not good. Now, I kind of gave the Phillies rotation a mulligan because you're coming off of long rest. They're coming off of that London series. So you're kind of giving them a, a little bit of a mulligan going like, all right, you know, you guys are coming off a long break and pitchers are creatures of habit. We've seen Zach Wheeler kind of talk about it in nauseam that he is a guy that is every fifth day. He doesn't like extended rest. He can pitch on short rest. And we kind of saw it in his first start against the Red Sox uh, when when I last recorded. It was kind of in the middle of that. But, you know, to no avail or to, to no worry at all because we saw Chris Sanchez bounce back. We saw Nola to an extent bounce back. Yes, he had that one bad inning yesterday. But I don't think that is an indication about the pitcher that Aaron Nola is. And we know who he is and, and what he can do. At the same time, I am a little worried about the offense, to, to tell you the truth. Um, we kind of saw them struggle against the Red Sox. And again, I kind of gave that as a mulligan of, of okay, you're coming back from Boston. You're coming back from England, kind of hard to to the sleep, the human element of the game. You know, we, we us as, as um, individuals, we kind of see these athletes as, as kind of robots, as, as kind of guys who are, just go out there and mash baseballs and pitch the ball damn well. And the Phillies are very good at that. Now we kind of lose the human element a little bit, realizing that they went across the, the you know, went to the, across the pond to England and were spent there for five days and their internal clock is all screwed up. And you only had one day off. And if you kind of look back on statistically, the teams that kind of come back from England are not great. So I kind of gave the Boston series and the Orioles series kind of a mulligan. Boston is sneaky good. You know, they're they're playing hot baseball right now. They just took three out of four from the Yankees. So 
they they're sneaky good. You know, they're in one of those stretches where the, where they're you know can we be contenders? They're not, but they can they could be. Then the Orioles, the, obviously, in my opinion, I think they are the best team in the American League. I know they're in second place behind the Yankees, but something about the Yankees, I'm I'm not I'm not believing in the Yankees. Um, obviously, they have amazing talent in in Soto and Judge, but. Other than that, like, do I really believe in Anthony Volpe? Like, Verdugo? Eh, like, I don't know. Like, to tell you the truth, like, I don't know how the Yankees are this good. I I mean, obviously, you have Judge and Soto batting back-to-back, -back, and those two are one and two in the AL MVP conversation, so I understand how they're doing it, but I'm saying, like, the other seven guys are like, eh. I mean, even their starting pitching is pretty good. Their bullpen is dirty, so I guess... The bullpen is how they're winning a multiple. Blah, 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 blah. The bullpen is how they're winning a bunch of games, but I just feel like the Orioles. I fear a little bit more. I think they have a lot more depth when it comes to their lineup. I mean, we got killed by Anthony Santander, which is ironic because just last week I was, um, excuse me, just last week I was speaking about how, um, uh, you know, I was talking to some of my friends saying. You know, Satan there is, is not good, and then he goes out and mashes against the Phillies. Colton Kowser had a couple hits. I mean, obviously the top-end talent, Gunnar Henderson, Adley Rutschman, uh, 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 um, who else had a home run? Uh, Mount Castle, O'Hearn. Like, they got depth for days in that lineup. And the rotation is pretty good. Um, obviously, they lost Kyle Bradish, which is a big thing, but that just means they're going to be in the starting pitching market come to the deadline. And they finally have an owner and a GM who are willing to move off of prospects and make big moves to improve this team because they know right now, now is the time to win. There were, I think that the World Series window isn't tiny. I think they have a pretty decent, big, uh, decently sized World Series window. However, I just think that they're going to go after like, I mean, I know they, they didn't they have one name I saw floating around, but I'm pretty sure they, he was on the Orioles last year. If I'm not mistaken, let me just see real quick. Yeah, he was uh, a guy that I was looking at is, is Jack Flaherty for the Orioles. I mean, he, he's sitting at 77 and two thirds for the Tigers to a three ERA, but I, I knew Jack Flaherty went, went there, but a guy in that of that talent, a Jack Flaherty. Um, I don't know. I mean, they could go after like a Garrett Crochet, but I feel like you're going to have to give up a lot for him. And I'll say the same thing about the Phillies because I do have um, some trade deadline stuff that I I want to get to. But you know, I I fear the Orioles more than I do the the Yankees. And and the Phillies went up against a mighty opponent in the Baltimore Orioles. Kind of at a bad time to tell you the truth. You know, the Phillies still had that hangover. I'm not making excuses. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that the Phillies were screwed over by the scheduling because they were in London and then had to face Boston and, and Baltimore on the road. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like, oh, the, the MLB's out to get us. Like, no, good teams beat good teams. It was that game one. So game one of the Baltimore series, um, I watched a little bit of, truth be told. Uh, it was Friday night. Um, I, I see Ashlyn and her and I had a date night. Went out to dinner, went to the movies. Like, it was us. It was an us night. Um, I value that time uh, above all else. Like, as much as I love the Phillies, the time I spend with her is beyond more important than that. Uh, I sound like Anthony Rendon right now, but the point is, I was keeping tabs on it, you know, and, and Stromy gave up the homer. And and listen, I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, Strom's cooked. He's cooked. No, he's not. I mean, he, pitchers give up homers. It was a it was a two out, two strike home run that was just tomahawked into that chasm of left field. Then, uh, you know, you you had that, and and you know, all all things are going well. Then you had the Marshawn play that was reviewed, um, and, and you know, marked out. You then had a rain delay. For God's sakes, above all things, you're going to throw a rain delay into this already like insane game. You then have the heroics of Alec Bohm, and I'll get to Alec Bohm because he played his way right back into a um, right back into the All Star game. He was already leading the National League. I'll, I'll pull that up later uh, regarding the All Star game, but um, he had the double by Bohm, and then Sir Anthony to come in. Um, Sir Anthony struggled, mind you, 
the defense kind of let him down today. So I'm not completely selling the ship on uh, Sir Anthony. I'm I'm definitely still believing in him. I'm definitely still all in on Sir Anthony Dominguez being being back or back enough to where I can trust him because we have Kirkering and yes, Kirkling Kirkering, excuse me, kind of got rocked today. Um, but again, bullpen guys are not going to be locked down. I feel like our bullpen is so good and we're so spoiled that we feel like every time they go out there, it's going to be one, two, three, bam, done, donezo. We saw that last night with, with Kirkering, with Hoffman, with Strami. Like we saw nine up, nine down, three perfect innings from the bullpen. And some nights are going to be like that. And some days are going to be like how they are today. Now, there was the error by by Bohm. There was the error by Marsh in center. More of a mental error. But that's besides the point. Um, it, it, it was a very frustrating series. Um, looking at Baltimore again. Uh, I know I'm kind of flip-flopping back, but I'm just kind of going with the pace of stuff here. The Baltimore series... You know, game one was fantastic. That was World Series playoff atmosphere, punch, counter, punch, like just in the trenches of just like bam, bam, bam. Game two, I have to give credit to Taiwan Walker. I mean, Taiwan Walker is going into a very, 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 very tough lineup. And I spoke about it in the last episode and even in in the clip I released on TikTok and Instagram, like, they tweak something with Taiwan. I, I can't, I think he's relying on his curveball a little more. I don't think he's leaning on that splitter like he did last year because the splitter last year was by far his best pitch and now it's not. So they're kind of, you know, just leaning back on that. I feel like, again, I wish I had the numbers, but I just feel like he's using his curveball more. And sure, the Mets, you look at the Mets start in, in England and you kind of look at that not as an anomaly, but kind of like my antenna was raised a little bit. Uh, and, I, and that's exactly what I talked about in, in my last episode. And I, he kind of did it against a very, very formidable lineup in the Baltimore Orioles. Now, you know, it, the wheels kind of fell off after that, you know. But how did that happen? But the uh, point is, like, Taiwan has looked better. Excuse me. <clears throat> Any users. Taiwan has looked significantly better. And I'm interested. I'm interested. Taiwan is on my watch list to, to see what he does in his next start. He's starting Friday against the Arizona Diamondbacks, which we'll get to. But it, And then we got to get to game three. Now, game three, and I've kind of... All right. The... The umpiring in Major League Baseball is a serious issue. Now, I know that kind of comes to no surprise to anybody, and I understand that this is an issue that has been way before now, and it's going to continue way after this. But what I've seen with the Phillies games the past like two weeks, I feel like in particular, the umpiring has been atrocious. They're missing bad calls. It seems like they just don't care. It seems like they let the heat of the moment get to him. For example, Sunday with Mike Estabrook, his strike zone was atrocious. And I'm always a believer in if you are going to have a bad strike zone, be consistently bad. Meaning, if you're going to miss three inches out to the right, keep it consistent three three inches to the right. You know, and I, I and everybody, and if you know, you talk to major league baseball players, talk to minor, even hell, even talk to college guys. They all share that same sentiment that if you're going to be bad, be consistently bad. Uh, that way they kind of know the zone. But if you're calling something six inches off the plate a strike and then the same pitch comes along and you don't call it a strike, what am I supposed to do as a hitter if I'm taking that pitch as called a strike and then the next time it comes, I take, and then, it's just not a, then it's a strike. It's just so inconsistent, and we saw the frustration on Zach Wheeler, and we saw it with Nola in Boston. Uh, Nola pitched with emotion, and now when I say pitch with emotion, I mean Aaron Nola is a very to-himself guy. He is a guy that does not let emotions get the best of him. He's a guy that kind of takes his lumps, kind of goes throughout the entire thing, head down, quiet to himself, whatever. That was the first time that I have ever seen Aaron Nola like pissed off 
pitching with emotion, like F you, I I'm just throwing this wherever it goes, it goes. And obviously he got shelled. Similarly, it happened to Zach Wheeler in, in Bal- excuse me, in Baltimore. You had, and it was the first batter of the game. You had a marquee pitching matchup. You had Zach Wheeler for the Phillies versus Corbin Burns for the Orioles. The Cy Young Award winner and Cy Young Award winner runner-up in 2021. It should have been Zach Wheeler that won. I've talked about it in Nalsum. Zach Wheeler should have won the Cy Young in 2021. But I'm not at all trying to diminish what Corbin Burns did that year. It just, if you look at the numbers, regardless. Um, it is a marquee pitching matchup on Father's Day. On Father's Day, Corbin Burns versus Zach Wheeler against these juggernaut offense. What more could you ask for as a baseball fan? The Phillies kind of blow an opportunity in the first inning. Um, they they had a chance to jump on Corbin Burns early, and they did for the most part. They just couldn't come through with runners in scoring position, and that has been a deeper issue that I'll get to. Um, but you then get to the first batter of the game, Gunnar Henderson, all-star, perennial MVP candidate, Gunnar Henderson. Um, there is a two, I believe it was 2-2. Two, two. Um, the pitch was nearly right down the middle, missed the next pitch, home run, after that, it was all downhill. There was so many bad calls against the Phillies, and I don't know if it's just my Phillies bias. I don't know if it's just my rage. It just felt like every bad call was going against the Phillies. Um, you had the first and second, no, uh, first and second two outs. The three-two pitch to Bryson Stott was way outside, called a strike three, and the Phillies were in two at that point. They was four to two. That is a Huge moment in that game. And now you completely, because of that missed call, completely squandered that. And honestly, if I'm a Phillies player, I'm kind of like, what? why? Why am I working a count? Because if I work a good count here, who knows that this idiot behind the home plate is not just going to ring me up. That, and who's to say that that's not going to happen? And it always, and it did, and it did happen. And the Phillies were just out of it. And then they got, you know, Ruiz was getting shelled and Turnbull got shelled. And it was just bad. It was just a bad end of that game, a sour taste in my mouth. Um, you know, they they almost staged somewhat of a comeback in that ninth inning, but it was never going to happen. It was just a very frustrating game and something that MLB seriously needs to look into having ramifications and consequences to umpires missing these calls a lot of umpires you know if they miss a call you know and and the player will be like hey where was that and he'd say i had it low the player will be like i think that's a little low and he would just go listen that's how it's going to be umpire might look at it and then the next at bat say hey my bad i missed that one you know that's on me a lot of them are like that, and, and I don't want to completely discredit. But the ones that are argumentative, uh, Mike Estabrook, who, when Topper got thrown out, instead of being the professional, just kind of looking off to the side, letting Topper kind of just get his money's worth, as they say, um, instead was screaming right back at him. So I, I just wildly unprofessional from Mike Estabrook, and I think a lot of Phillies fans and even Orioles fans would would agree that it just it was just a very, very unprofessional thing that he did. Now... Back to my original point is I feel like there needs to be ramifications and consequences for umpires missing these calls, Um, and especially ones that it's consistent. Missing a call is one thing. You know, it's the human error. They're implementing, actually, Jeff Passan, I read the article about it. Uh, Minor League Baseball is implementing the automatic balls and strikes, like, fully. So we'll see how that goes, and then who's to say in a year or two that it's not implemented in Major League Baseball. So we'll see. But, I mean, when it is a game-defining moment, like that Bryson stopping. Now, mind you, the next batter to come up, I'm not sure who it was at that time. Marsh, maybe? I can't remember the lineup from that day, but who's to say the next batter that comes up doesn't pop out on the first pitch? There's no way of knowing. But... There just there needs to be something. There needs to be just something to take away that power trip that I feel like some of these umpires go on when it comes to calling balls and strikes and having vendettas against certain players. I just think that needs to end. I think it's wildly unprofessional. I think a lot of people would agree with me. Maybe they don't. I don't know. I don't know. Um, mm. 
speaking uh people who would agree with me is uh is Alec Bohm like the hottest man on the planet right now? Uh Alec Bohm currently he's uh he's pretty good at baseball, Alec Bohm. He is sitting at God, 2021 was a bad year for Bomer. That's 647. Anyway, Alec Bohm this year uh, in 71 games is hitting 305 with an 840 OPS, seven home runs and 60 RBIs, which him having seven home runs and 60 RBIs is very funny. Um, to give you a perspective about how bad his 2021 season is, 115 games, he only had 47 RBIs. Mind you, um, mostly because of uh, that certain person we don't talk about was. Anyway, that just cut out. I don't know why that happened. Uh, because a certain somebody was just an absolute weenie. That person will not be named. What is Alec Bohm hitting in his past two weeks of games? Because this is pretty good. Here we go. Alec Bohm, good at baseball. Sorry. Um, In the last... I mean, geez. Uh, the last 15 games, I'll give it two weeks. Uh, he's hitting 302 with a 460 slugging. Um... 19 hits, two home runs. Uh, to even put it better, in his last seven games, he's hitting 433. So, Bomer, I was a little worried about him for a little bit uh, that, that that week stretch, uh, a couple weeks stretch in May, but uh, it seems like he's coming back. He's using his hands more, playing right back into that All-Star game, so that is very, very good to see. Another thing, another big news that we had is uh, Trey Turner returned on Monday against the Padres. And an interesting move here, the Phillies actually sent down Johan Rojas. Now, that could mean a slew of implications. I myself believed he should have been in AAA a lot sooner. Um, the Phillies kind of handed him the keys and said, this is your job, lose it, and he did, ultimately. Um, Johan, listen, I I love Johan Rojas. I'm a Johan Rojas believer. I truly believe he is going to get traded at this year's deadline. I feel like if... Excuse me. I feel like truthfully, if they didn't think he was going to get traded, I really feel like they would have DFA David Dahl and kept Johan Rojas up here. But the fact that they decided to go with Dahl and stick Rojas in AAA to me indicates that he might be tr getting traded. I don't know. I, I truthfully, I don't know how I feel about that. Um, you know, there's there's. One guy that I want, and I think every Philly fan and everybody and their mother knows who I want, but I just feel like Johan Rojas is going to be in that deal. Now, Trey being back is huge. Um, him being in the two-hole, just it's great. Came back, had a few hits. He had off today, which I don't mind, um, especially with the off day tomorrow. I think giving him those two days off, kind of like easing him back in a little bit, um, it is good. It didn't seem like he skipped a beat. Uh, Philly, you know, Citizens Bank Park gave him a great standing ovation for him being back. He was greatly missed. Um, he's a fan favorite here, obviously, after what happened last year and and, and regardless of, of all that stuff. Now, when it comes to I'll kind of I'll kind of talk about the, the Padres series. So uh, the bats were flying on Monday. You have Trey back. You have uh, Schwarber has just turned it on to another level, and I kind of talked about it a couple weeks ago that, you know, I was worried about him, but all of a sudden he's now third in the NL in home runs all of a sudden. It's just Mr. June. He does it every year, like clockwork. He can't explain it. I can't explain it. Nobody can explain it. Just Mr. June, he comes up every time, man, just shells – Bomer had a home run in that first game. And then you really saw now. I don't think people are really talking about Christopher Sanchez as like a legitimate Cy Young award contender. Um, let me look. Oh God. Why is this like being weird? Chris, Chris. So Christopher Sanchez I mean, Chris Sanchez in 14 starts, 77 and a third innings, has a 291 ERA. That is it's ridiculous. Like, that is your four starter right there. Has a 291 ERA. That's better than your one and two. That is better than your one and two right now. Chris Sanchez is legitimately taking that next step forward that I feel like not everyone is talking about. 
Um, I feel like people just expect him to go out there kind of like we do Ranger and just shove. And it's an awesome thing to have because Chris Sanchez, you know, the first couple of years he was acquired, I believe it was in the, I think they traded Garrett Clevenger. Was that who it was? Hold on. I'm looking that I'm 99% sure the Phillies traded came from the Rays organization. I am pretty sure Chris Sanchez came over from the Reds organization. And my like internet is being dookie right now. Um, here we go. Wikipedia. He's only 27, by the way. Dude, my internet is straight cheeks right now. Holy. Yes. I was Curtis Mead. My apologies. Uh, Sanchez signed with the Tampa Bay Rays, international free agent. Um, he then was traded to the Phillies in exchange for Curtis Mead. Is Curtis that? It's Curtis Mead, though. 30, yeah. Not great, but needed him. I'm kind of looking at Curtis Mead. Anyway, uh, Chris Sanchez, very good. Taking that step forward that we're not really talking about. Then get to last night's game. Now you look at the bigger issue here with the Phillies and, and something that I don't... I mean, I feel like a lot of people are going to start talking about it now, but is the runners in scoring position. The past, like, ever since, honestly, they came back from London, the runners in scoring position has been awful. Despite winning last night, they still left 12 men on base. Like, that game should not have gone down to the wire like it did, and it was the same issue today. They had plenty of opportunities, and they just couldn't just break it through. Um, and that's something they excelled on, or excelled with all year. And mind you, there's ebbs and flows to a baseball season. So am I pressing the panic button? No. Is it frustrating? Absolutely, because we know this team has it in them because we've seen it all year. But it just felt like last night they just never got the big hit until they needed it, obviously, in the, in the ninth inning. But it was a frustrating game. Um, Aaron Nola, six innings, you know, solid. Got ran into a little bit of an issue in the six. I mentioned the bullpen going one, two, three, seven, eight, nine, perfect, nine up, nine down. Then get to the ninth inning and Robert Suarez, man, that guy's the new Jonathan Broxton. That guy cannot pitch against the Phillies. Mind you, he shut us down today. But regardless, even Jonathan Broxton shut us down every now and again. Um, that guy is having flashbacks, faced Bryce Harper in the ninth single, Bomer single, Bryson Stott single, Casty single, W for the Phils. It was a great game. Um, I was watching it right behind me in, in my room here, and I was trying so hard not to scream because my nephew is sleeping, and I am not going to have my sister-in-law come in here and kill me because I'm screaming that the Phillies won, so I had to scream into a pillow as to not wake up my nephew. So there was that. Um, something cool that kind of happened in this uh, game today, despite the loss, Ranger Suarez pitching in front of his family for the first time in his career. To me, that is that's awesome. Um, I, I just that is just such a great thing. It was his wife and his two kids. Ranger having a wife and two kids was something I just didn't know. Didn't know he had a wife and two kids, but that's just awesome to me. I, you know, I'm all about family and the fact that he was able to do that was just awesome. And his son looks exactly like him. His Ranger Suarez's son looks like a little Ranger, literally like they just shrunk down Ranger Suarez. Um, Ranger was good again. I mean, 15 starts a one seven ERA. Uh, Kirkring got shelled. Dominguez, the defense kind of let him down. So I'm not exactly going to hang my head and be like, bah, they don't want bah, blah, blah. Uh, They still took two out of three from, from a decent opponent in the San Diego Padres. And uh, Bryce with two home runs. So it looks like he's turning it back on, um, you know, going into the off day to kind of rest up. But I feel like this off day is going to be very good for the Phillies. Get a couple of these guys off their feet, kind of recoup a little bit from the London and the traveling and kind of the true off day, especially at home. So it's good that this off day is coming when it is. Um, but yeah, so moving on. Shout out Pepsi Zero. Pepsi Zero. 
So moving on to John's hot takes. Uh, for those of you who don't know, John is my manager. He manages all the stuff that has to do here. Uh, gives me some hot takes, and I kind of uh, hit him. Oh, I completely forgot. Hold on. I got to get my phone. Hold on. Okay. 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 All right. So, trade deadline coming up, kind of. Uh, we were kind of talking about it. So, there's one guy that I want, and I think everybody knows. Um, it's Luis Robert. I want Luis Robert on the Phillies. And yes, I kind of contradicted myself a little bit last episode. The more I think about it, the more I want him. Um, so I'm pulling up my trade for Luis Robert. Um Okay. Here it is. So Luis Robert is the player I want the Phillies to get. They need an outfield bat. I think everybody and their mother knows that they need an outfield bat. Now, what is it gonna cost you? So my trade is the Phillies get Luis Robert and the White Sox in exchange are getting pitcher Mick Abel, outfielder Johan Rojas. Oh, wait, is he? Hold on, I think I screwed this up. Oh, yeah, okay. My bad. Okay, let me, uh, let me dial it back. Um, sorry, I'm... Okay. All right. Sorry. I completely. Okay. So my perfect trade for the Phillies to get Luis Robert at the trade deadline. The Phillies obviously get Luis Robert. In exchange, the White Sox are getting pitcher Mick Abel, outfielder Johan Rojas, outfielder Justin Crawford, Carlos De La Cruz, as well as Simone Muziati. I think... The they get the upscale talent. I think it gives them enough. It gives them a couple guys who can a actually. God, I changed it. I hate myself. I'm sorry. I changed it again. Oh my god, I'm like I'm struggling. I'm so sorry. Hold on. Just bear with me here. God. Just bear with me. All right, let's try this again. I finally, I have it now. I have it. Okay. A third time's the charm. Definitely haven't given you guys this trade. Anyway, my perfect trade for Luis Robert. The Phillies get Luis Robert from the White Sox. In exchange, the White Sox are getting Mick Abel, Johan Rojas, Justin Crawford, Rafael Marchand, and Simone Muziati. I think that is more than enough to get it done and push the needle. And you're not necessarily losing out on a lot there. You get the top end arm there. You get the catcher who can take reps right now. Same thing with Muziati. And you're getting the development of Justin Crawford and the outfield of Johan Roas. There you go. Any Hoosers. Argue with what you will, my friends. I'm sure people are going to receive that one great. Anyway, John's hot takes. Uh, so John says the Hulk is the greatest Avenger in the MCU. And he he is referring to the Hulk now. 
Um, he kind of has the brawn and the brains, as we saw in Endgame. Banner decided to kind of merge himself into the Mega Hulk and Shia. And just anyway, I don't know. I haven't watched the MCU since Endgame. So, any losers? Uh, sure, sure. Whatever you say, bud. Um, this one I agree with only because it's just going to increase his trade value. Uh, he said Marshawn should be the everyday catcher over Stubbs until JT comes back. It's just going to increase his trade value and uh, package that deal. Maybe you don't have to lose a a um a, 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 a you know Muziati in that trade if if you know uh, Marshawn is is killing it and he can take you know reps right now. So we'll see. And then obviously Johan Rojas will be traded at the deadline was the other hot take, which I don't think is that hot right now, considering they sent him down. Um, now my, my, uh, moving on, we have Matt's due to the week. And, uh, for those of you who don't remember, Matt Saporsky, friend of the program works at a certain company that, uh, I can no longer hop on the pod. So he sends me dudes to kind of go over and talk about because who, what baseball sickos don't love talking about dudes? Oh, anyway, uh, my dude of the week this week, Rod Barajas, catcher. Uh, Mr. Barajas, we know there was time with the Mets and the Dodgers. Uh, spent five years in Texas, three, or excuse me, five years in Arizona, three years in Texas, two in LA, two in Toronto, one in with the Mets one with the Pirates, and obviously one with the Phillies in 2007. Gross. Uh, nobody liked that guy in red pinstripes is the quote that Matt gave me to go along with Mr. Barajas. That guy stinks. Um, yeah, Rob Barajas. He was a Phil. He was a Phil. Uh, now, moving on, wrapping up with our series preview against the Arizona Diamondbacks, the boogeyman. Coming back to Citizens Bank Park for the first time since beating us in the NLCS last year, where I was and saw it firsthand. Listen, this team is not good. Um, all due respect to the Arizona Diamondbacks, they're not good right now. Corbin Carroll is a shell of himself. You're not getting the same production out of Zach Gallen or Brandon Fott or even Jordan Montgomery, a free agent that you brought in. The bullpen stinks. The offense, they're just not good right now. Just take advantage of this. Seize the moment, get back on track. I understand you have the bugaboos about what they did in the NLCS, but that was last year. We're talking about this year. Oh my God, that like came out my nose. Pause. Um, take care of business. Moving on. Uh, after the weekend series against the Arizona Diamondbacks, we are going to Detroit where we are going to see Matt Veerling back in action. Uh, just kind of grind down their starters. They have top end talent. In Tarek Skubal, in, in um, the aforementioned Jack Flaherty. Um, they have dudes that are uh, very good starters. Their bullpen is a little shaky, so if you can kind of grind down their starters a little bit, work good at bats, which we've seen this Phillies team do, there'll be no reason why they can't take, you know, two or three, even sweep the tires in Detroit. So that is going to do it for me today, guys. Uh, I appreciate you guys listening. I appreciate all the support. Uh, if you like what you saw, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Listen to, uh, you know, me ran on TikTok and Instagram. All that link and stuff is down below. And I will see you guys next Wednesday. See you.